Hey guys, it's Bea here and today I have another one take review for you. This week is kind of special, I don't know if you know this, but Christmas is coming. It's right around the corner. I decided today to do a little bit of a Christmas theme, thus the hat. Um, and today I'm going to actually be featuring two games instead of one. I'll be doing the two games that we got for Christmas last year, um, talking about my experience with those games, how they've lasted on the shelf all year, um, and yeah, basically my thoughts and opinions as per usual. So thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first up we're going to be talking about Quacks of Quidlinburg. I hope I said that right, it sounds a little weird, Quid Quidlinburg, Quedlinburg. I never know how to pronounce these things, but it's Quacks, basically everyone knows it as Quacks. Um, this was my husband's choice for Christmas last year, we actually got it because we had, um, we had seen a games group during um, prior visit to the library, there'd been a games group at the library and they'd been playing Quacks. Um, it looked really fun, they said it was really simple to learn and while we looked at the table and thought that's like nothing we've ever played before, it looks crazy complicated, we decided to go with the recommendation and get Quacks. So um, we got Quacks, it's been amazing, um, We've I can't believe actually that we only got it last year because we have played it so much, we've played it with so many different people as well, this is a great game to bring out when you have family visiting, friends visiting, we took it camping with us, um, sorry not camping, we took it on a little beach holiday we went um, and played it with my family then as well. Um, and and yeah, like Quacks is just, I think it's, you guys probably already know about Quacks, but um, I'm going to show my opinion anyway. So if you don't know about Quacks, well then this game is a push your luck bonanza. It's um, pretty much the only push your luck game that, uh, well I guess Clank is kind of push your luck as well, but this is very, very heavily push your luck. You are placing chits into a bag and blindly pulling them out to fill your potion in hopes that you won't explode. Now. Push your luck can be a tricky one for people because it feels like you don't have a lot of control over your game when there is a luck, a, such a heavy luck element involved. But I think this game does it well because it's it's a balance of of obviously you there are times when you're going to explode. It's just it, it's you can't be helped. But they also don't take everything away from you. So even if you explode in this game, you do get to have one benefit so you can pick normally there's two benefits so you can pick one or the other so i find that's really really good and it's a really good incentive as well for pushing your luck because you're like well especially early on um points aren't that much anyway so you want to be buying more chips so so yeah so i think it's i think it's really well balanced in that sense so i will <laughs> loop back around to that so when you um are building your pot you will be earning points and you'll be earning points to buy more chits. So if you do explode, and you explode by pulling out too many of the white chits, which you get given as base hand, um, then you have to choose between the two bonuses. So early on in the game, it's probably you'd be picking the buying one because you want to be adding more different colored chits to your bag so that you're exploding less. And then later on in the game, you might be picking the points to try and get yourself around that um, VP track. So I really do think it's a cool, um, cool balance there. The other thing is that the chits all have different effects, abilities, and placement. Um, so also the order of the chits when they come out can have a different chain reaction effect. Of course, you cannot um, specifically plan for this because it is lucky, but you can somehow um, sort of tip the scales in your favor by buying more of certain chits or buying more in general so that you are outweighing those white ones. So there definitely is strategy in the game. It is definitely on the lighter side of strategy, but there is strategy there. This is just one of those games that's just fun. Like you, when you think about a games, when you think about games that are fun, um, Quacks is one that comes to mind very, very quickly because it doesn't feel like a board gamey board game because there is just that silliness to it, um, which I really enjoy and appreciate. So it is a bigger setup, but it is still a lighter game. So yeah, Quacks we love, Quacks we have played a ton. Like I said, I can't believe it's only been a year since we've had it because it's just seen so much action at the table. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's more action than a lot of games actually because it is so a uh, lot harder. But um, yeah, so Quacks has, has done really well this year. I can see us playing it a ton for years and years to come, and as my kids get older, we're gonna play with them as well. I do think they could play it now, um, at four and six, on a basic way, they might not understand the strategy on it, but they could technically play it. They just haven't because we have a lot of games um, and I don't want to burn them out on games any more than I want to burn myself out on games. So we haven't got to this one yet, but it's on our list to try with them. So Cracks of Quedlinburg, um, I'm going to give a 8 out of 10. It's um, yeah, just been a really fantastic experience this year to have this light, fun game to play. The next game I'm going to talk about is 
This one is very, very different. Um, we've got Clank Legacy Acquisition Incorporated. I don't even know if this is fitting in the screen with me right now. Um, <laughs> this game is an absolute, absolute beast. I mean, this, this, I've only got the lid here because I literally cannot be holding the whole thing up like this because it's just so heavy. Um, this is a campaign game. This is Clank as a campaign game with a fantasy, uh, fantasy theme. Um, it is just, all the things you could hope for in a legacy campaign game, basically. It's got the stuff you get rid of, it's got the pathways you choose, um, it's just, there's so much, um, so much stuff to tap into that we found that we, we almost barely scratched the surface when we played because there was just so much and we did have to play semi-cooperatively actually to access everything because if we were playing fully competitively like you are supposed to in Clank, we just would not have been able to um, engage and interact with so much of the content. So we played semi-cooperatively through this campaign so that we could um, interact with a lot more content. Um, and because we played it at two player, that wasn't necessary. At a four player game, I imagine you can just go for it, um, do your own thing, and there doesn't need to be that agreement there. Um, but as two player, you definitely need to be having some sort of agreement on we need to reach these goals before we, um, we start to play more competitively. So we did that, um, so much fun. You're playing, um, you're just basically playing as you are competitors, so you are trying to outscore each other because you get rewards for doing that. But at the same time, it did just feel like we were exploring a map together, we were creating a map together, we were creating a world together, which was really, really cool. We played it over Christmas and New Year's, um, we had planned to, to sort of um, draw it out a little bit to try and savour it, but we got so sucked into it that we were playing um, one or two campaigns a night for a little bit, and then we ended up finishing it. I think it was really, really fast. We finished it really, really fast. Um, and I, I kind of regret playing it so fast because it did feel sad when we finished it. But the good thing about this game is that it is fully playable once it's complete, which is, I think, I wouldn't even say rare for a legacy game. I haven't actually heard of another legacy game like that, so correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that's crazy. So you can, you, we can keep playing this game and we have played it a few more times. I prefer the space version for just a a base game experience just because I prefer space theme, but it is a fully playable game, double sided board, it's completely customised to how you've created it, and you actually can still access content from the campaign afterwards. So if you've missed certain story parts because you've chosen different pathways, obviously that's just inaccessible forever now, but if there are waypoints that you haven't yet reached, you can still reach those and, and access those after the campaign ends. So I think that's a really cool touch. Um, we have had a lot of fun just, yeah, just, this game is kind of like a, I don't know, it's just a whole like draw you in, like this is your game, you know, like legacy games are. And I think this is the only, only legacy game maybe that I've played the first Legacy game that I've played at least. So for me, that was just like, wow, like mind blowing. We are creating our own board game. Um, obviously a lot of hand holding by the actual designers, but you know, it felt really cool. So for me, this was just such a great experience. I would not be able to rate it anything, anything less than a 10 out of 10. Um, I don't, I have just jumped so far ahead and I feel like I haven't told you much about the game, but I don't want to spoil anything. So it is, it is clank, you know, you're still making clank, you're still deck building, you're still moving around collecting treasures and stuff, but there is just so much more to explore in it as well. Um, and there is just so much to the storyline. It's so silly. It's funny. They've just, they've done it again. You know, they've kept their humor in there. They've made all the storylines a bit um, you know, quite, it's quite funny, there's interaction points where you're just like, oh, it's so frustrated, but it's just all in that light-hearted um, way that they do it, and they just successfully, really successfully created um, a clank world in a legacy game, so I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna, just gonna, I'm gonna give my rating, I can't stop talking about it, so I'm gonna give my rating. It is a 10 out of 10 for Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. It is a mouthful of a name, it is a mouthful of a game in the best possible way. I can't recommend it highly enough if you're looking for a legacy campaign game, or if you haven't played Clank before and you're looking to enter the world, this might be a great way to do that because you do end up with a fully playable game afterwards. Thank you so much for watching. Have a merry, merry Christmas, my friends, and I will see you um, in the new year. Bye.